Uh, hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Okay, so crypto exchange Bybit has now officially started trading XRP again against the euro, guys. This one coming from Bondcrypt on Twitter. Crypto exchange Bybit starts XRP trading against the euro. Another exchange that has joined a growing list of crypto exchanges relisting XRP after Ripple secured a partial victory against the SEC in July. Following in the footsteps of several other cryptocurrency exchanges, Bybit has started trading XRP against the euro on its spot trading platform. The popular trading platform announced the addition in a blog post on September 4th, saying that it will help enhance users' trading experience on the exchange. With the new listing trading pair, XRP to euro, users can now buy and sell the crypto asset using the euro. So this is a Dubai-based exchange. They also launched uh, euro trading pairs for seven other cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Dogecoin, uh, ADA, USDC, and Solana. The addition of XRP on Bybit comes less than two months after Ripple secured a partial victory for its legal tussle against the SEC in July. So guys, the relisting uh, looks like uh, the relisting is continuing. I don't know if Bybit is uh, one of those crypto exchanges that was legally uh, allowed to uh, operate in the United States, and this was why originally they uh, delisted it. It is a du uh, Dubai-based exchange, and we know uh, XRP is free and clear in the Middle East by and large. Uh, so I'm curious to know why it, uh, why they just decided to relist now. Maybe it was just, uh, you know, part of a bigger plan, maybe to list, uh, some of these other cryptocurrencies on their exchange with Euro pairs. I don't know if you guys are uh, from Dubai, the Middle East, if you use Bybit, let me know in the comments section if, uh, if you have some insight on this. Anyway, wanted to thank Boncrip for posting that. Subjective views here on Twitter posting this. This is a comment, guys, from Augustin Karstens, general manager of the BIS, issues a statement at the 2023 G20 Tech Sprint in collaboration with RBI or the Reserve Bank of India, which is in fact a Ripple partner, guys. I'm going to play you guys a little bit of this clip. Listen to this. You have successfully pursued a bold agenda with sustainable and inclusive growth at its core. The BIS is honored to have supported your efforts. It is my great pleasure to join you for the grand finale of the 2023 G20 Tech Sprint. Since its launch in 2020, the Tech Sprint has served as a premier global hackathon and a platform for responsible financial innovation. We at the BIS have co-hosted the Tech Sprint with the G20 presidency every year since 2020. And we are delighted to co-host this year's edition with the Reserve Bank of India. The G20 Tech Sprint has provided a stage for innovators from around the world to demonstrate how new technologies can address some of the most important problems facing the financial sector. Their solutions have inspired us all. And I am sure that this year's finalists will do the same. The 2023 Tech Sprint addresses on a key G20 priority, strengthening cross-border payments. Too often, these payments are slow, opaque, and expensive. That is why the G20 has been working hard on this issue through the G20 roadmap for enhancing cross-border payments. It is fitting that this work has been at the core of India's G20 presidency. After all, India has been a pioneer in delivering fast, secure, affordable, and inclusive domestic payments, most notably through the Unified Payments Interface Platform, or UPI, and the broader India stack ecosystem. And it has built on this success to tackle the more complex task of cross-border payments, including by linking UPI with the PayNow system in Singapore. Through our innovation hub, the VIS has also promoted the use of new technology to address key pain points in cross-border payments. Project Nexus in our Singapore center has created a gateway to link domestic fast payments around the world at scale. We are now partnering with central banks in Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand to use the Nexus model to enhance payments connectivity throughout the region. Project Icebreaker in our Nordic Center has used similar technology to connect prototype retail center bank digital currencies across jurisdictions. And through Project Enbridge, Dunbar, and Jura, we have shown how multiple CBDC arrangements can deliver cross-border payments that settle quickly, cheaply, and with greater transparency than existing methods. 
Okay, I'm going to stop it there. The uh, the clip goes on for about another uh, two and a half minutes, give or take. Some key takeaways, new technologies can address some problems facing the financial sector. Uh, but the BIS key priorities, okay, strengthening cross-border payments, as you heard, all those uh, different projects that they're working on, a lot of them have ripple ties to them. Many multilateral payment platforms are currently under development and show enormous potential. And then multilat- uh, multilateral platforms should take into consideration the types of blockchains being used, interoperability, APIs, embedded supervision, privacy, and cybersecurity. We will learn the results of this year's G20 tech sprint very, very shortly. So we can see how the BIS is uh, continually trying to shape this uh, financial framework using cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, obviously DLT. A lot of those projects, as I mentioned, do have ties to Ripple. So I wanted to thank Subjective Views here on Twitter for posting that. Mike Manfield here also bringing this to our attention. An update with regards to Ant Group and Alipay. And Alipay connected to Ripple. Ant Group brings Alipay Plus to the Philippines, guys. Ant Group and the operator of Alipay Plus, the global cross-border digital payments and marketing solution, today announced that a total of four mobile wallets are now accepted in the Philippines. These include Alipay HK, which is the Hong Kong one, uh, Kakao Pay, Touch and Go Wallet, and Alipay. So uh, for South Korea, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Chinese. Uh, the Chinese mainland, which has been accepted by Filipino merchants since 2017. This enables travelers from those regions to enjoy a cashless experience using just their home mobile wallets to make payments, improve the travel experiences, digital payment options like mobile wallets become the norm for day-to-day transactions. The acceptance of these three new mobile wallets via Alipay Plus comes as travelers return to the Philippines. According to the Department of Tourism, more than 3 million tourists have visited the Philippines from January 1st to July 19th, 2023, reflecting a continued robust recovery. So I'm guessing uh, since the beer flu, they had seen uh, tourism numbers go down. But guys, now with these uh, this new technology to be able to pay a lot more seamlessly, you got to remember all these countries have their own currencies, uh, you know, utilizing DLT technology, leveraging that. These countries can now offer that to people visiting uh, to make that experience a lot more seamless. The DOT also shared that uh, inbound tourism receipts uh, from January 1st to June 30th, 2023 are more than 500% higher than the same period last year. All because of these new wallets uh, from these countries specifically, Hong Kong, South Korea, Malaysia, and the Chinese mainland, all now being accepted by Filipino merchants via Ali Group and Alipay Plus. Alipay uh, having a secondary partnership with Ripple. So great news here. Wanted to thank Mike for posting that. Guys, I also happen to see this from Currency Cloud, a Ripple-enabled partner in card and currency cloud, partner to help creators and digital entrepreneurs tap global markets. This is the latest news from Currency Cloud's blog. They are the experts in simplifying business in a multi-currency world, and they've partnered with InCard Guys, the digital bank for e-commerce businesses, to enable its digital entrepreneur, influencer, and e-marketer customers to make quicker, simpler, and value-for-money international transactions, unlocking global revenue streams, and taking their businesses global. InCard is a tailor-made, one-stop shop financial solution for e-commerce and marketers, a segment often overlooked by traditional banks. And InCard's users get online first financial management tools for their e-commerce and marketing needs. And so guys, by partnering with Currency Cloud, InCard adds even more value to its customers by giving them a fully automated service, which gives them access to local and international payment rails. This enables them to get paid by global customers and pay suppliers easily while saving money by having access to GBP, Great British Pound and Euro for competitive FX rates. And even Currency Cloud here says they are the experts at simplifying business in a multi-currency world. Obviously, by leveraging RippleNet DLT technology, the XRP ledger, they can do this. And uh, here they highlight the uh, GBP Euro capabilities, competitive FX rates. Well, I mean, when it costs fractions of pennies to send over the XRPL, leveraging XRP for that utility, of course, you're going to have a superior product and uh, going to knock that competition out of the water. So now they're partnered with Incard. And so Incard's vision is to provide our customers with an increasingly flexible, fast and seamless international payment system. Currency Cloud is a reliable provider. We can count on to enable our customers to unlock global revenue streams, break down borders and save money by having access to more currencies at highly competitive FX rates. So there you have it, guys. That was a quote from the CEO of InCard. Another Ripple partner knocking it out of the park. And here's another one from Mike Manfield on Twitter. Emirates NBD takes stake in trade finance fintech Comgo. 
And Emirates NBD is another bank uh, in the Middle East that does have a Ripple connection. Dubai's biggest lender, Emirates NBD, has made an equity investment in Geneva headquartered trade finance and treasury network Comgo. Uh, the strategic equity investment was made by Emirates NDB's Innovation Fund, the bank's corporate venture fund. Created earlier this year, the fund has uh, the objective of combining the bank's digital ambitions. So get this, digital ambitions and regional expertise with the agility and technological innovations of fintech companies. Boom goes the dynamite. al Kasim, group head of wholesale banking Emirates NDB said, we recognize how fast changing fintech landscapes are and how they're impacting our industry. Uh, and we will continue to find and support the next generation of technologies that will help us shape the future of finance and to further strengthen our position as one of the leading financial institutions in the region. Sulema Badi, the CEO of Congo uh, down here, she said, we are delighted that uh, Emirates NDB has taken a strategic equity stake in Congo, becoming the first Middle Eastern bank to hold shares in the company. Uh, this marks a significant milestone and a powerful affirmation of Comco's solid track record and promising future. So we're going to see a lot more of this, I think, uh, in the coming years, guys. More banks. I mean, well, we've already been seeing it uh, in the previous years. We've been seeing a lot of the secondary partnerships building for Ripple-enabled banks, Ripple-enabled companies partnering together. I mean, even just the Currency Cloud thing uh, is another one. Currency Cloud has been a Ripple partner for a very long time. And so they are now partnering with other companies to leverage RippleNet technology to make uh, their processes a lot more seamless. Uh, and so here we have banks now investing in other banks and financial institutions. And so the web keeps getting bigger and bigger through these Ripple enabled companies. Anyway, I wanted to thank Mike again just for posting that. And as we see more updates on the XRP ledger, we see more companies, or in this case, the Bitru Exchange, wanting to get in on some of the action. So Bitru has partnered with the Exao Ledger to drive innovation in the XRPL ecosystem. So we talked a little bit about Exao last week. I'll link a video I did up here in the top right-hand corner. And Bitru is now collaborating to drive innovation to the XRPL ecosystem. Uh, they have joined forces with a shared vision to redefine transactions, governance, and user participation within the XRPL ecosystem. Central to this collaboration is is the Exao Ledger, okay? They're cutting edge smart contract sidechain integrated into the XRPL ecosystem. This integration introduces the revolutionary concept of hooks, which is what uh, Vitz Vin has been working on for a while now. Intelligent components seamlessly integrated into Exao accounts. Uh, these hook functions as intuitive smart contracts validating transactions based on predefined rules. This breakthrough innovation opens the door to automatic transactions processes and the development of secure and efficient decentralized applications or dApps. Uh, Bitru assumes a pivotal role in the Exao ledger journey, occupying a prestigious governance game validator seat during the launch phase. The strategic involvement underscores Bitru's unwavering commitment to foster a robust and trustworthy blockchain ecosystem by actively participating as a governance game validator, Bitru plays a decisive role in shaping the trajectory of the Exao Ledger, exemplifying its dedication to advancing blockchain technology. And so, you know, uh, Bitru, I got to say, Bitru has been a great exchange. It is the exchange that I'm using for my patrons, patreon.com slash working money channel, where you guys can follow my trading journey this coming bull run. And as you guys can see, I am selecting coins and trading on the Bitru exchange. I also do have an affiliate link in the description of the video if you guys uh, are looking to open up a Bitru exchange. They're also good because they have a lot of XRP pairs. So one of the reasons why I use them, uh, there are many, many reasons. So if you guys are looking to sign up for one of those, you can use my affiliate link. You don't have to use it though. But again, I mean, here's just more proof. Bitru looking to uh, help develop the XRPL ecosystem and uh, by doing so we'll be driving more utility and more value to the XRP cryptocurrency um, and so we've been hearing a lot about Exao over the last week we're involved in launching Exao network because it has the hooks Evernote XRPL needs this is coming from Scott Chamberlain here on Twitter it will unlock a new universe of use cases for developers we may fail he says new chains are hard uh, but for those holding XRPL and hoping B2M is your friend, your hedge against Xao succeeding wildly. Well, some were contemplating this, like Moon Lambo down here saying, Scott, could you explain how Xao will benefit XRP and the XRPL? I read the Xao white paper several days ago and find it fascinating. I see the technology could be useful. I see how Xao could benefit from XRP, but my understanding is there is an underlying premise that Xao will benefit XRP and the XRP ledger. I'm not disputing this premise or agreeing with it, but I need more information. The white paper barely touched on the subject at all. Uh, and so Scott Chamberlain does say, I thought we just did. Seriously, though, the white paper just explains Exao. It's not a marketing doc, etc. And so people were wondering, is this going to benefit the XRP ledger or is it going to take away from it? So much so that David Schwartz 
had to actually comment on this, guys. This is courtesy of Michael Branch on Twitter. Ripple CTO says Exao and XRP Plus will not, in fact, diminish the worth of XRPL and XRP. Some were thinking that it would. Uh, so this is what David Schwartz is saying here. He recently spoke on whether the upcoming XRPL sidechain Exao and its native token XRP Plus would diminish the value of the original XRPL and XRP. Schwartz's comment came as a reply to a question from Saul, an XRP community figure. Saul recently drew an analogy likening XRPL to Nokia and Exao to Apple. So that's an interesting concept there, okay? Nokia, for those of you guys who might be too young to know, was the original cell phone that really kind of took off and uh, everybody had a Nokia brick phone. You could throw those things off a three-story balcony and it would survive. It was a very basic phone, very utilitarian. It did the job, but then Apple came in and really changed the game. This analogy raises concerns that Exao could displace the XRPL in dominance like Apple displaced Nokia. So what is this argument here? Saul does right. I wonder how David feels about the XRPL Nokia Exao Ripple analogy. Uh, sorry, uh, Nokia Exao Apple analogy. And so we asked David Schwartz and David Schwartz did respond here. I think that analogy is actually quite perceptive. So what does that mean? I remember in the early days of Bitcoin, everyone thought that no cryptocurrency could ever overtake Bitcoin because Bitcoin had first mover advantage and a technical advantage was impossible. The thinking was that any competitor would have to be open source. So if there was a better way to uh, adapt the technology that a competitor had, Bitcoin could just adopt it. Uh, but of course, that's not really true. Ethereum adopted technology that was at least in part uh, some ways better, but Bitcoin couldn't adopt those technologies. A lot of the value of Bitcoin was in people relying on it working the same over decades. So even though Bitcoin has not advanced technically nearly as much as many other blockchains have, it would be kind of silly to say that they've made Bitcoin obsolete. This coming from David Schwartz, guys. I know, you know some of you guys in the XRP community do think Bitcoin is obsolete, but it's being adopted. Financial institutions are buying. We're still trying to figure out what the underlying value is there for Bitcoin. However, there is demand for it, and that's why the price is high. Uh, Bitcoin still does what it always did, and there's a market for that. Newer blockchains, he says, that, st uh, that start smaller can be more agile and can develop and prove new technologies work with real money and without risking the stability of existing L1 chains. Existing chains can adopt new technologies, but often have good reason not to. Most importantly, I think the idea that a new chain will detract from an old chain is an extremely unlikely thing to worry about. So there you go. David Schwartz saying a new chain is not going to detract from an old chain. We should be working together to grow the pie rather than resenting something new that can grow the pie for everyone because it takes a slice. So the adoption cryptocurrency technology advancements will make all boats rise. In other words, that's what David Schwartz is saying. Uh, even John Deaton here commenting on this. Uh, Singapore Signum Bank in 2020 said BTC, Ethereum and XRP are the assets of the future. It classified Bitcoin as the future asset for store of value and wealth. It classified Ethereum as an infrastructure play of the future. And it classified XRP as the technology of the future regarding payments. Of course, that was prior to the SEC lawsuit. The question is, was that good advice in 2020? And number two, is that good advice today? So that, of course, is debatable. But, uh, you know, again, all boats will rise in this coming transformation, the cryptocurrency revolution. We're already seeing uh, exchanges like BitTrue jump on board with the Exao project. And many banks, financial institutions already Ripple enabled, continuing to forge partnerships, guys. We are still somewhere in the middle phase, I'd like to say now. Crawl, walk, run. Remember that? As per David Schwartz, Exao and XRP Plus are not going to detract from XRP. And I think we're getting very, very close, guys, for that utility to eventually kick in. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.